Spirit of God, bright when breath of the vine's life begins, blow at you always to create us anew. Give us the breath to sing, lift it on each ring wings, held in your hand, born in your wings. Bright dove, grant us your space and love, healing upon your wings for all living things. For when we live your peace, captive will find release, held in your hands, born on your wings. Welcome again to our service of worship on this Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, Human Relations uh, Sunday. And we welcome you to uh, the service with uh, your Trinity friends. And we pray, O oh God, that your world is uh, at least under God's control. Would you join me in a call to worship? God, you call each of us to serve you, and we answer. Here I am. Jesus, you call each of us to follow you, and we answer. Here I am. Holy Spirit, you call each of us to worship you this day, and we answer. Here I am. Let us pray. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Our prayers are in your heart even before they are on our lips. And yet we must utter our prayers. We must proclaim our praise of you and all your wondrous creation. Your love surrounds us and you have promised to be with us always. You know our heart's desire to serve you. We pray that you will keep us true to that desire. And so we utter our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is, Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. Hymn number 400 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Like a fetter, my 
guide my wandering heart to Thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, I take and seal it. Seal it for Thy courts above. Good morning. Pray along with me the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our, our hearts, hearts and minds, minds by the power of your, your Holy Spirit, Spirit that as the spirits are read bread, and your word proclaimed, proclaim, we may hear with joy what you say, say to, to us today. today. Amen. And now I'd like to read our Old Testament lesson today from Psalm 139, 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You seek, search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your words that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your books were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Bl Lord, words of the Lord for the people of the Lord. We have a few prayer requests this morning. We ask that all of you be in prayer for Brother Saad Shar, who's in Jerusalem, Palestine. We understand that he is extremely ill. He is with us in spirit, and we pray that God will continue to keep his angels surrounding him and protect him. Also, we would ask for prayers for uh, Mr. Jerry Nicholas, who is the uh, son-in-law of our own uh, Beverly Wicks. He sustained a back injury, and uh, he is having some difficulty in his uh, treatment and healing. And we ask that you would continue to keep Brother Frank Collins and anyone else that you might know who are infirmed in your prayers. Include, of course, our warriors out in our streets, our postal workers, our policemen, our firemen, our frontline grocery store workers and clerks, nurses and doctors and all others. And then I would especially ask you to keep one of our members uh, Catherine K. Galloway, who this morning was moved to hospice care at, at Warwick Forest in the Keswick uh, Assisted Living section. Her son, Robert Galloway, called, and he was quick to mention that she was an active member of one of our United Methodist women's groups. I believe it was the Joy Circle. And he left his phone number, he says, if anyone wants to call him or get in touch with him for information, they might call him in New York at 212-864-3414. Uh, Sister Kay is in room 212, uh, which is, and is receiving hospice care. And of course, you're very much aware of some things that are happening in our nation today. 
And as we pray for those that we love, those that we know and love, that you would continue to keep our nation in your prayers. And if you could allow me, I was sent a, a prayer from an unknown author. I'd like to pray that prayer with you. Let us pray. It's a prayer for peace in the world. Lord, we pray for the power to be gentle, the strength to be forgiving, the patience to be understanding, and the endurance to accept the consequences of holding to what we believe to be right. May we put our trust in the power of good to overcome evil and the power of love to overcome hatred. Mm. We pray for the vision to see and the faith to believe in a world emancipated from violence, a new world where fear shall no longer lead men to commit injustice, nor selfishness make them or us bring suffering to others. Help us to devote our whole life and thought and energy to the task of making peace, praying always for the inspiration and the power to fulfill the destiny for which we and all men were created. And I thank my friends and I pray for them Linda and Henry Hosling in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give and us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Would you join me in our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning, Take My Life and Let It Be. Hymn number 399 in our United Methodist Hymnal. Swift and beautiful. 
attempt to read this heartfelt letter that I have written to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I ask you if you will bow your head and pray with me for just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the strength to rise from my bed of slumber. I thank you, O oh God, for my spiritual mentor, Bishop William Henderson, who this week came home to be with you. He's been a long time in the vineyard of faith. I pray, O oh God, that you would comfort his wife, Reverend Diana Henderson, and her children in Buffalo, New York. I pray, O oh God, that all those who have witnessed his ministry will continue to keep the faith, and continue to remember that the Lord sees. We ask all of this, and I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You, O oh God, our Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. Amen. Amen. Dear Martin, this is not my first letter to you, uh, Reverend Dr. King, so I hope it is okay to just call you Martin. Bishop Woody White, a retired United Methodist bishop, gave me the idea to write a few years ago. I was certain that I would have a lot of great news to send your way. I was confident that I would report the state of human relations in America to be in fine shape. I realize now that I should have written last year. Oh, what a difference a year can make. Retrospectively, last year was not a great year either. It started out well, but by the end of January, our great political leaders became aware that a worldwide viral pandemic had reached the shores of America all the way from China and Europe. Our president told us that we would be safe because the virus would not last. He said the few known cases at that time would soon be eradicated and the coronavirus or COVID-19 would disappear from our shores. Well, it did not. And the reports early in 2021 are that Americans are dying at the rate of more than 3,000 per day, and many medical systems are exhausting their capacity to treat folks. Our mortuaries have been unable to handle the great numbers of deaths. Many cities and towns are utilizing hundreds of refrigerated trailers that used to haul our meats and vegetables as portable mortuaries. We are, are in dire trouble in America. 
We are among the worst countries in the world with high infections and death rates. Our scientists and politicians assure us that the light at the end of our pandemic tunnel is vaccines developed by something called Operation Warp Speed, which should help abate the spread of the viruses. This coronavirus is already mutating and becoming more contagious as I write. Our economy has been negatively affected by the pandemic, which has required most Americans to shelter in our homes and forego our family gatherings or travel outside our local areas. When we gather in public places, we are required to wear face masks and stay at least six feet away from everyone outside our family units. The unemployment rate is so high that the U.S. Treasury has issued direct individual payments and provided low to no interest business loans to help retain workers. Restaurants by the thousands are failing, either because of loss of business or too strict operating protocols. You would be amazed to see the vast rainbow of peoples who have responded to the continuing social injustices that are occurring in our nation. Several black and brown citizens have been killed by police. Breonna Taylor in Kentucky was killed by an errant police raid. Mr. George, George Floyd died when a police officer kneeled on his neck for nine minutes as he called in anguish for his dead mother to help him. Many of these unfortunate incidents were recorded on personal cell phones. No one can know how many instances of brutal treatment and police misconduct went unrecorded, though. As a response to these and other tragedies, a movement arose called Black Lives Matter. Because they used my initials, I reasoned that my life also matters. Professional athletes openly published this slogan and the names of many dead persons of color on their uniforms. Doc Rivers, a black professional basketball coach, cried on national television and said, it's amazing why we keep loving this country and this country does not love us back. The mayor of Washington, D.C. named an area across from the White House Black Lives Matter Plaza. Not long after its naming, the U.S. president ordered peaceful protesters tear gassed by American soldiers so he could stand by a church holding a Bible. I recently heard the U.S. president addressed as the white supremacist in chief. Those are not my words. Our churches are mostly closed to help mitigate viral spreading among vulnerable populations. Some open churches cannot sing. And you know what that does to black church worship. Martin, some folks feel that most churches are closed because of the pandemic. Others just think that the heads of our government can best spread disinformation to folks who do not hear a regular proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. You could clarify this if you had not been killed by bigotry and hatred. Well, Martin, I really did not want to tell you this, but a lot of folks are still upset with you. It seems they are upset because black and tan people are still trying to overcome. And for years, many white folks have become increasingly disturbed. Some of our Caucasian leaders use the phrase, getting back our country. I thought you might know better how to address those concerns. You did say while you lived that the cross we bear precedes the crown we wear. Martin, there are some signs that Americans are persevering and pressing through this mess. 
In the 2020 presidential election in November, we had the highest ever voter participation. And for the first time in American history, a brown woman, Kamala Harris, a fellow alumnus, was elected vice president. Joe Biden was finally elected president. He is our new old president. Reverend King, you have, would have been proud to see the volume of folks in every city and town who stood in line to vote. Not even the fear of the pandemic could deter them. Unfortunately, you would also have been heartbroken to see long lines of vehicles waiting for rationed food and basic survival needs. In many towns, folks were using social media to inform each other about stores who had supplies of paper towels and toilet paper. Martin, it resembled the America of the Great Depression years. One of your book titles, Where Do We Go From Here? Could never have imagined 2020 America I am confident that no one saw this day coming. Oh, I forgot to mention that the spreading pandemic made it necessary to close most of our educational institutions. Our schools, colleges, and university had to adapt to online instructions. Of course, this became a tremendous disadvantage to black and brown folks, especially where computer access was unavailable. Can you even imagine an America without the means to educate its children? Who could imagine losing our greatest resources, our trained and prepared people to the likes of a bug? And speaking of bugs, I almost forgot to tell you that many of our government's vital intellectual properties were hacked by a foreign government the Russians or perhaps the Chinese, depending on which political party's news feed you listen to regularly. The Democrats say it was the Russian government and the Republicans named the Chinese. The big problem in America is that truth has become a scarce commodity. Please forgive my rambling, Reverend King, but I forgot to tell you about the results of the 2020 election. I, like so many of our fellow citizens, am so, in, so tense that my mind often feels like a pretzel. I might be suffering from a lapse of real in this current unreal reality. I find it difficult to communicate with family, friends, church members, strangers, store clerks, doctors, mechanics, or even taxi drivers. Few people appear to have a lot of things in common now. And please, from the television and radio information provided, common truth is scarcely available. Okay, let me focus. The 2020 presidential election is still being contested, two months after the votes have been counted. It seems that the winning candidate received approximately 11 million more popular votes than the other candidate, and 306 electoral college votes to the other candidates, 232. You remember that winning requires at least 270 electoral votes. Well, the loser said that he is in fact the winner. The losing candidate determined without supporting information that the election was rigged in favor of the winning candidate. So he, the current president, has declared himself the winner. He has been so adamant about this that he filed more than 50 court appeals and at least two appeals to the Supreme Court. As a matter of fact, many government officials of his party affiliation are supporting his claim of a rigged election even though many of them, his colleagues, received enough votes for election to their offices in the same candidate 
uh, in contest of which he was a part. Now bear with me, Martin. I am trying to get to the major reason for which I am writing this letter. Martin, I am writing the truth as I have observed it, but my hope is that you will remain dormant in your eternal resting place when I tell you this and some other extraordinary things. It was on the day set aside for Congress to count and ratify the results of the Electoral College votes, January 6th, the day of the Epiphany that marks the turbulent times in which we live. It is said that the incumbent president who received the second highest votes in American election history invited his followers to assemble in Washington, D.C. to rally in support of overturning the people's election. His followers came, listened to speeches, and then marched to the Capitol building, broke in and tried to disrupt the Congressional Electoral College vote count. All the major news networks called it an attempted coup or seditious activity and some other things. Martin, I have never feared more for my country than I do now. Some of my own family members and church members keep saying that this president, president is doing God's work. I am writing to you to ask you to intervene if you can. If you have been blessed with any power to go directly to God Almighty, please, Martin, please try to find out what God is saying about all this. I am praying and asking but I have not received any answers. I beg you to help me find out what God can possibly be doing. Please have his holiness forward some sign to the world that he has got this. There are just three days until Inauguration Day, and many armed groups are threatening the use of force in many capital cities across America. The news reports say that there are more than 20,000 National Guard troops deployed in Washington, D.C. to rebuke any violence. Please, Martin, hurry. I hope I have better news in my next letter. I remain your grateful follower, Reverend Dr. B.L.M. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, I'm writing this letter, not because you need to receive it, because I needed to seek your counsel in this matter. Yeah. 
his precious blood. By Jesus Christ. But you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God. As we leave this place, may peace, like a river, flow in and through your soul. And may the peace of God, not as the, the peace that the world gives, but the peace that Jesus gives to us. As Jesus has sent me, even so, send I you. Go in peace and be prosperous. In Jesus' name, amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people who dwell in heart and sin, my heart will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make my darkness bright. All who cry to them, whom shall I serve? I will 